In this video, I'm going to show you how to navigate between a flame game and other screens in a material app. The benefit of this is you can design these outside the game screens however you like using normal flutter material design and then you can go into your game, play the game, and then also you'll see how you can pass out a value from the game. So for instance, if we play again, and we can go to the fire this time, and you can see the fire is there. Depending on which object is hit here, you will be redirected to a different screen. We're going to begin by creating another screen similar to this main menu, although it will be the end screen of our game. So in the views here, we can just create a new view and call this the end screen. And for now, let's copy everything in the main menu and then just update this to be the end screen. And we can have this say game over. Instead of having one button here, we can actually add two buttons. One of them can be play again. And below that, we can have the main menu. And we can make this just a text button. And instead of going to the game, we'll go to our menu route. We actually have no way to get to this. So if we go back into our router, we can add a new route for the end of the game. And then very similar to our menu, we can just go ahead and call this end. And this will, of course, go to our end screen. If you're not familiar with Go Router, the past video talks about how to set all that up. So this is good. We now have our route, our, our end route. And what we want to happen is once the game ends, which you can see the water bottle is removed from the screen on game end, we want to also just redirect to this end game. So if we find one of these obstacles, for instance, the trash obstacle you can see this is kind of where the game is ending and we are just printing out that the game is ending here so what we would want to do here is be able to redirect and you could try to do this with go router using using the same logic we use here if you do try that you'll notice that it actually won't work because we don't have context here so one way to get around this and basically tell our app to do something in the material app within our flame game we can use a callback. So let me show you how we would set that up. If we go back to our Go Green game, this is the game that is called from our game screen, which the game screen is here. And what we can do is add a callback function to the Go Green game that we pass in from the game screen. And then we can use that callback function within our game ending when the collision is actually happening. Right within the Go Green game here, we can add a required property. We can call this the end callback. And now we can define the end callback down here. And it's just going to be a final void function. So now we have this end callback, which will just be a function. And we can pass that into our Go Green game. So you can see now we do have an error when we are defining our game here because we aren't passing in that callback. So to fix this, we would simply add the end callback. So we can essentially give this anything that we need to. It's just a function. What we want to happen when the game ends is we want to navigate to that screen. So we can use context here because we are within just a stateful widget. So this is just part of a normal Flutter app here. And we can use the context go named and then pass it that app route of the end name. So now when we define our game, we're also giving it this callback to use when the game ends, but we're not fully using this yet. So if we go back into our game here, we are taking the function, but we're not actually using it. So we need to go back into our obstacle and we'll do this just for the trash one. And we can now call that callback function from the game. So the game element will be able to access that end callback. So now when we hit one of the trash obstacles, we should get redirected to the end screen. So if we rerun this and start the game and then hit the trash obstacle, you'll see we do go to the game over screen. 
so this is good, but it could be better because we actually don't know how the game ended in our app here. So if we wanted to on our end screen, say something like you hit the trash or really just know what the end outcome was and display something different, we don't actually have a way to do that right now. So let's go ahead and add a text value here and say essentially what that was. So the end state. And now we need to actually define what our different end states are and then pass it back. So this is actually not that difficult. We are going to create a new enum with all the different end state values that we could possibly have. So for right now, we'll just create this new file in the lib and we'll call this the game end state. And this will be an enum and the different end states that we'll have are the trash, the water, the fire, and we will also have the recycle bin, which is that blue one, which would essentially be treated as our win state. So now we have these four different values. We can use them in our callback. So the callback right now does not take a parameter, but we can actually give it a parameter of that game in state. And then what this is going to allow is for us to, in the obstacle, pass in that game in state. So for here, we're going to be giving it the game in state of the trash and we can update the other ones as well to match so this one will be the water and then this one will be the fire and the bins are similar if we just go into the bins the trash bin will also just be the trash we will have to import that and then last the recycling bin will be that recycle in state that is good. Now the end state should be passed back to the callback. However, the callback here is not set up for handling of those end states. So let's go ahead and do that. Basically what happens here is our end callback will receive that game end state. So here we can place that game end state. So what this means is we'll get that end state value from the obstacle or whatever is being called here, which in this case for the water one, it would be this water value and that will get passed back in to this callback as this end state. So now we can use this end state within this function and then redirect to different areas of the app. And the way that I am going to handle this is with a switch statement and we're going to be switching on this end state and then we're going to check essentially each of the values. So we'll have the game end state of the trash and if it is the trash then we're going to redirect to end trash which this route is not currently existing so let me go ahead and actually finish out these cases and then we will go create the routes so our four end states are now going to be handled and we can create a different route for each one there are a couple ways you could handle this. Of course, you could use the same route and just pass the end state into it, depending on if you want it to look kind of exactly the same, or you could use the routes themselves to kind of handle the differences. So I'm going to use the routes themselves right now because later these are going to possibly redirect to a completely different page. So in the router where we have the end we're going to actually not use the end at all and instead we'll use those four values that I created. And those four values are right here now added to the app routes. And now we can update our routes here and basically our end screen here could take as a parameter also the end screen state. So if we go back to the end screen, we can have this just take a parameter and we can also make this a required parameter and then all this parameter is going to be is just that game in state. So with this game in state, we can basically use that down here and just display it for now. So we can call widget and then game in state. And that won't be a constant value. So again, this in screen, which is what we were seeing at the end of the game, will now have access to that end state. And then we're going to just be printing out what that end state is here on the screen. But then in our routes, we can give it that end state, that game end state. And the game end state for the trash one, we're going to know that that is the, the game end state of trash. So that is basically how we can handle this. So let me fill in the other ones and then I'll kind of recap all the pieces of this.
so now I have it handling all four of these new end states. So the end trash, for example, is going to have that end trash name, and then it is going to go to the end screen, but it's going to give the end state of trash being passed through, and then each of the different paths are going to have their related end state being passed through. Let's rerun this and it should be working. So if we hit start on this, if we go to one such as the water here, we go to the end state of the end state dot water and that can also just be written out as just water if we use the name value after this. So if we play again and now we go to the trash, you can see the end state is trash and we can go to the fire this time and you can see the fire is there. So I think this is a good place to stop and illustrates the concept here, which is that you can use a callback to pass data between your flame game and then also use that data in your Flutter app. This is actually very powerful because you can use the flame game for specific pieces of the app, but then use a regular Flutter app for the majority of it. And in fact, the last bottle app that I have the complete version of is only using the flame component for this part of the game and everything else is built in a normal Flutter material app.